Okay, here is our very quick review of buffer solutions. Uh, we'll have a second review that goes a little more in depth, but we're gonna get started. So buffers, solutions that resist changes to pH, this is incredibly important in living systems. Um, if the pH is off, then the systems do not work as they are meant to. Buffers contain a weak conjugate acid base pair. So for example, if we had a weak acid, I'm just gonna use a generic HA, and we also had its conjugate base, what it becomes after it donates the proton. When we look at this, we can write an equilibrium expression. You could pick either, I pick the acid, always reacting with water. Since it's an acid, it'll donate a proton. I'll get hydronium and I get the conjugate base. So we have this equation that I can write. It's always one of them reacting with water that talks about the equilibrium between the two different versions, the protonated version of the molecule and the deprotonated version, the acid version and the base version. And if you remember, we could write a Ka expression for this, products over reactants. You could work all the buffer problems using that Ka expression, but it turns out if we take the negative log of this, we get a very useful equation called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and it makes a lot of the math much, much easier. So notice what we've got, pH equals the pKa, the negative log of the Ka value, plus the log of the ratio of the conjugate acid concentration, um, I'm sorry, the conjugate base concentration over the conjugate acid. They're in the same, the same things on top, this would be in the Ka expression. All right, so let's look at how we could use this. You have a buffer solution containing ben benzenoic acid and the ion, the conjugate base, and the pH is 3.5. And we're asked, do we have more of the protonated, here'd be the protonated version, or more of the deprotonated version, this one? We are given the pKa. All right, let's look what we got. pKa, 4.16, pH, 3.5. When I look at that, I know that this, mathematically, I need this to give me a negative number to make my math work, which means, change color here, that this piece right here must be a decimal. It's gotta be a number less than one. All right, so that tells me that I must have more of the protonated version. The denominator must be bigger, all right? That makes sense if you think about it for two reasons. The pH is less than the pKa, so you can remember this because lower pH, more acidic. So when the pH is less than the pKa, we have more of the acid. When the pH is more than the pKa, we have more of the base. If you also think about it this way, the pH is pretty low. That means that this is acidic. If we scroll back up here and we look, if it's acidic, we have a lot of H3O+. And if it's more acidic than the Ka, that's going to be our tipping point, our balancing point. We have a lot of this. That's going to drive this equilibrium back towards that protonated version. All right, so scrolling back down here, let's take another look. You have a solution that is 0.1 molar in our weak acid, 0.3 molar, this is our basic salt, but there's our conjugate base. It's the only part we care about. Potassium would be a spectator ion. And we want to know what's true. So let's look at that. So now I know pKa 8.7, that was given. I know that this ratio would be 0 0.1 molar on top. Uh, oh, I've got that backwards, 0.3 molar on top and 0.1 on bottom. When I look at this, that number is going to be more than one. It's going to give me a positive value for the log. And so I could say when I look at mathematically, pH is more than pKa. Also makes sense. We have more of the basic version, so our pH should be higher. If I want to calculate the pH, I'm going to plug those values in and you should get a value of 9.2. So it fits with our prediction. All right, we already said this, but notice when the 
top and bottom are equal, we get one, log of one is zero. So the pK is really the tipping point. At, when the pH equals the pK, we have equal amounts of both. If the pH is more than the pK, the base form predominates. And if the pH is less, the acid form predominates. So then the last thing we really want to talk about here is defining the concentration of a buffer because every buffer has two different molecules, right? The conjugate acid and the conjugate base. But really they're two forms of the same molecule. So when we define this concentration of a buffer, if I just say I have 0 0.6 molar of an HA buffer solution, I don't mean I have 0.6 molars of the acid. I mean I have 6.6 molar total of both the protonated and deprotonated version, okay? So I could have 0.5 and 0.1, I could have 0.3 and 0.3, I could have 0.4 and 0.2, but somehow they tally up to be 0.6 molar. So let's look at this example. If I have 0.6 molar HA buffer solution, and I know that whatever this weak acid is has a pK of 3.8, I want to find that concentration when the pH is 3.8. So when you look at this, you're going to say, you know what? I know when pH equals pKa, HA has to equal A minus. And if they have to tally up to be 0.6, they must both be 0.3 molar. All right. In the next video, we will look at how uh, buffers actually do work to limit changes in pH.